Hello everyone, Alchemist here. So if you're new to this channel, what you'll be in for is a weekly update and outlook on the pairs we're going to go through today being AU, EU, GU and US30. And in the coming weeks, I will be launching a set of different series. One will be on trading mindset and psychology. Another will be in health and fitness. And there will be another sort of lifestyle slash financial fundamentals course as well, where you'll get little insights as to what the complete course will be offering. And so to make sure that you don't miss out on this content, please make sure that you do like and subscribe to the channel just to support the content and allow me to continue to do so. And please also turn on the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any new content as it's being released. Now, before we get started, just a reminder, the course is now live. Um, a lot of people have been waiting on this day and as, I've, as have I. And there have been a few members who have joined the waiting list and are yet to actually get on board. And to those members, I have actually emailed you across everything that you need to do just to make sure that you do get that discounted rate as opposed to the rate that's currently on the website. So please make sure you are checking your emails. And if you are a member who was on the early bird 25 or 50 and have not received an email for me, please do comment on this video below just to let me know as a few members have said that my emails are getting caught in their spam. So to avoid that, please let me know and I will try to email you through a different account or make sure that you are receiving them another way. So let's get into it today. So first off, we're going to start looking at AU and we are of course going to always be starting off on the weekly chart with a fresh clean chart. And on the weekly time frame, we just need to identify the current supply and demand range that we're trading within. So if you have been watching any of my previous videos, you'll know that this is the demand range that I've currently been marking out and we see this week tapping into. And in terms of supply, we have this candle above here which we got very close to mitigating, but didn't actually tap. There being our supply, perfect. This is supply, why? Because it did set a lower low here. Okay, we don't mark breaks of structure on the weekly time frame, so we're gonna get rid of that, but that's just to justify as to why I chose that as a supply zone. This here bullish candle has not yet fulfilled its objective of setting a lower low, so we would not be marking it as supply. We'll jump down to the daily. And in terms of the daily, the most recent break of structure that we've had was here. would be our daily boss, leaving the highest point above as our daily high. And we won't yet be able to mark out our daily low. Um, all of this will be covered off in the course and the members will know exactly as to why I can't yet mark out that daily low. But we are still, we haven't set that low on the daily time frame yet. So we could still see a further pullback before continuing short again, or we might just be going short again first, then having a pullback higher into sort of premium of this range before potentially targeting this low here. So on the daily, that's all we needed to do. And let's jump down onto the four hour. In terms of our structure on the four hour, the break of structure is actually the same point as the daily is. So I'm just going to jump in here and name this daily plus 4H boss. Therefore leaving this as our daily plus 4H high. So if you have been watching my videos, you'll notice everything I do is extremely systematic. There's zero discretion in what I do. And every part of the process that I've created and every part of the strategy has a flowchart to follow. And simply knowing that and knowing the probabilities are stacked in my favor and knowing my edge works to a T, that allows me to execute from a emotion-free mind state and rather one that is completely rational and which will allow me to actually execute on the same type of trade over and over again, knowing in the long run over a large sum of trades, I will be profitable and that's actually what's occurred for me. So that's the 4HI and with the 4H low, we can't yet mark out the low either. So currently we know that this is the high, but we haven't yet put in our low. Could be a little lower, could be here if we do see a higher pullback. Knowing that this here pullback from the bottom is 83.8 pips. If you have watched my previous videos, we know that on the four hour, we need to see a pullback of at least 90 pips to confirm that low. I'm sort of assuming, but that's not a word I like to use, um, that we could potentially see this next candle give us that pullback of 90 pips. So let's for now use this as our four hour low, but I'm not actually gonna be marking it out at all. So if this were to be our four hour low, if we did have a greater pullback an additional seven pips above this high, then we would see in here, this would be the POI in premium that we'd be interested in. Again, the members will know exactly as to why this pre this particular POI is important. A lot of it comes down to this interaction point here. And then we could also even see in these buy to sell wicks, which is what actually price tapped into 
before giving us this bearish momentum that we saw enter the market. <clears throat> you can also see that it swept all the liquidity above here. And looking at this on the four hour, knowing that we're bearish and knowing that we've started to see these zones up here begin to fail, like this was a very important demand zone that we were monitoring for quite some time. Once we saw this demand zone fail and knowing that we are bearish on every time frame, we can start to say that this low here should actually be a targeted low. Okay. Again, with this, there's specific rules that we'll need to follow, which once you become a member, you'll have all of that laid out for you. But currently I see this here as a targeted low. This will just be a catalyst for a pullback when we arrive at it, if we arrive at it. Never gonna speak in absolutes because we don't exactly know what price will do. However, this is a high probability zone to be a catalyst for a pullback. <clears throat> so are these here buy to sell wicks as well. Okay, which is what is actually giving us our pullback currently. That's important because it's had interaction with this. And that zone there is important as it set a new lower low than this low. Okay. I will be giving little uh, hints and wisdom, hints of wisdom and nuggets like this as we go along. But to get the whole sort of thing like I was doing prior in all of my trade breakdowns and everything, you will be having to join the courses. Out of respect for the members, I need to be keeping all the secret sauce for them now. So this is a catalyst for a pullback. We could see that this could potentially continue to give us a pullback higher into this region here. So essentially we'd love to see something like this. And then we'd love at this point for 15 minute uh, structure to turn bearish, align with order flow. And then we can start to target this low first. And then we could even potentially be holding a 10% runner or something smaller, just depending on your risk appetite into this zone or even all the way to the low as once we started seeing all of these demand zones and catalyst for pullback fail along the way, we can then assume or we can then forecast that this low should also not hold. Okay. So that's currently what I'm sort of looking at on AU. I'm not going to be going into too much more detail on all the different pairs as again, just out of respect for the members, they are all the information is going to be remaining there. I will be dropping an educational video on YouTube every now and then, but that's not going to be in a sort of structure like everything else has been so far. And like I said, there will be all the different series on mini series along the way that you can follow along. Um, but yeah, to get to get the best out of me, to get the best out of the strategy moving forward, I am just gonna ask for you guys to respect the content, respect the strategy and to join the course. So if you do have any questions on that, please do let me know. Otherwise, let's move on to EU. So let's now have a look at EU. And again, obviously we're gonna be starting off on the weekly timeframe. We wanna be looking at what we've most recently interacted with in terms of demand to the left. So I'm just gonna drop a horizontal line here and go across to the left. It has been some time since we've been down this low. Um, but yeah, if you've watched my previous video, you'll know as well as to why I'm marking out this zone. But essentially we have this POI here, which has had interaction with a level to the left, the supply zone. And then we've had that demand flip, which has also swept liquidity. And that's currently where we're trading off of at the moment on the weekly. Perfect. We've seen that first tap, we've absorbed a lot of orders and it's pushed price up. Hasn't exactly made it to a refined sort of supply zone, but we can see it's, it's sort of just tapped into this whole supply range on the weekly. And then we're starting to see that bearish momentum to the downside. So obviously at the time, once we drop down here on the lower time frames, once we started to see catalysts for pullback along the way start to fail, we could therefore take that this low would be targeted as we just saw an AU. And that's why we've actually just seen that low being run, not this part of the week that's just passed, but the week before. So on the weekly, now we can't say that this is the most recent supply because this was the supply that we interacted with here. The most recent supply would be this one. And so we can remove this. Now on the weekly, we haven't actually had a body close below, but we only need that body close below on the daily to confirm this as a weekly supply zone. So if we look at the daily, we do have that body close below. Therefore we can uh, we can say that this here was our weekly supply zone. In terms of our daily structure, we can get rid of this one now. In terms of our daily structure, it was here. This was our breakup structure, leaving this as our daily high. And this here, after we had quite a significant pullback of 180 pips or so, this here was our daily low. So again, that's all we'll need to do on the daily time frame. And let's jump down to the four hour. <clears throat> 
Now the members again have received flowcharts as to exactly how to mark all of this out and it's just a step-by-step -step process. Um, I'm not gonna obviously go into too much depth on it here, but for the four hour, this was the, actually the breaker structure that we needed to mark up. Leaving this as our four hour high. And our daily low would also become our four hour low. Now for us to actually have a new four hour range, so currently our four hour range is from this high to this low, one of two things needs to occur. We need to have seen a pullback greater than 90 pips, which we have had here, okay? And then this low failing. On the four hour, we actually only need to see one body close below. There are different rules for the 15 minute, um, but on the four hour, we only just need to see that one body close below. So that would be one way we would get a break of structure on the four hour, and that would be in a bearish scenario for us to continue bearish. The only other way to have a, a bearish break of structure is if we see the current four hour high being broken with a body close above, okay? I think a lot of the reasons why people get direction all the way confused is that they look at all these little internal breaks of structure as actual breaks of structure and then their biases would be switching from bearish to bullish bearish to bullish and then that would allow them to incorrectly mark up their trades and have all their trading ideas thinking that here we've now turned bullish because we've closed above so we should be taking buys from here it might have worked out for a little while but knowing that overall we were still bearish and we've already had that pullback into premium of the four hour leg into a really nice refined poi here we shouldn't really have been looking for, for longs instead where we've seen this candle here give us a nice lower low. Essentially, we had a four hour chalk here. Okay, we could in this zone be looking to take shorts, knowing where we are situated in the four hour, knowing that we've actually retraced back into premium and knowing that this has been quite a weak demand zone. We can also say that this here daily plus four hour low is also gonna be a targeted low and we could have been taking shorts from here to break this low. So my forecast for this pair at the moment, um, there's been a lot of ranging motion going on and EU tends to do that a lot more than AU. Another reason why I've switched from EU back to AU. Um, but yeah, this is what I would think might happen is we could be coming into this week where there would still be an unmitigated zone, maybe on the 15 minute, which potentially could give us a pullback higher into this zone here, which if we do break below this, this will be a nice supply zone. And I do believe that this low will be targeted, okay? Once this low is targeted, if it does break, we will see a pullback, okay? That's just what happens after we get a break of structure. Of how big, we won't yet know, but potentially into this zone, we would have a new four hour range. So we'd like to see a bullish pullback of at least 90 pips to confirm our four hour low. Then we'd ideally want the pullback to be into premium of the 4H leg. EU does like to retrace all the way into premium almost every time on the 4H, whereas AU, it's not as often that it occurs, so I don't always wait for it on AU. However, trading EU back in the day and knowing how it still operates now, I would wait for a pullback into premium of the four hour leg if we create a new one here <clears throat> to then take another continuation short, which we could see falling quite a lot lower as well. Where to, we'd have to look back to the left and sort of identify where our next target <clears throat> makes sense. And that'll be based off an old demand zone back in the past. But yeah, given where we are situated in terms of EU's pricing, it has been years and years since we've been this low. So we could see a new influx of um, liquidity entered into the market, but I do believe that liquidity will be present below this low here. So under this, there'll be a lot of stacked orders, a lot of people's stop losses, a lot of people's sell stops. So ideally price will wanna be targeting this to fulfill more orders and that's how price moves by getting its orders filled to take out all the liquidity below these lows, give us a pullback and then at that point, we'll see if price then turns bullish on the four hour or if we are gonna hold in a supply zone in premium to continue short again. That's my outlook for EU. Now let's have a look at GU. So we can see last week was actually very bearish on GU here. It's pushing us down all the way into the bottom of this week that we had highlighted in last week's outlook. So this would be the demand zone that price is currently trading within. And then this here would be the supply zone that pushed us into that demand zone. So again, that's all that we'd need to do on the weekly time frame. Now, if we jump down to the daily, so let me get rid of these. This here would be that daily break of structure that we would have seen that pushed us into this demand zone here below. So this would be our daily boss, leaving this here as our daily high. 
And just like we saw on AU, just because we haven't had yet a significant enough bullish pullback, we can't yet mark out where our daily low would be exactly. So that's all we can currently do on the daily time frame when we'll jump down to the four hour. <clears throat> so on the four hour time frame, where I would be marking the four hour boss would be here. And for me, I'd need to see that candle close below. So this here would be the four hour boss. Leaving this as our four hour high. And this here as our four hour low, which we can see we've actually just wicked below and we haven't yet closed. So whether or not that's been a sweep or it's actually gonna in the next candle close below is yet to see, yet to be seen. We'll just have to see how price develops on Monday. But knowing that we've actually wicked below this and what we can expect is if we just draw up our premium and discount on the four hour, if we look at this here, we've got this zone, got this zone, which would have been a catalyst for a pullback. You can see that fulfilled its objective as a pullback zone. All these highs here, I'd be looking at them as liquidity to be swept. And this zone here is quite good. Swept liquidity there. Don't know if it's had interaction with something significant on the left. Let's just have a look at that zone here. Okay, so it looks like it's coming into these buy to sell wicks here, which were partially mitigated, but where you can see this line, it actually came into a point which this wick above had not yet mitigated. So probably something in this wick here on the 15 minute. So it has actually had interaction with a significant zone to the left. It has led to a break of structure and it does have a liquidity sweep. So it is quite a good zone to be marking out. So it's quite a long time away, so sorry for all the scrolling. Almost there we're in August, September. Oh, this is last year. Let me scroll back out a little bit. Okay. So this zone here has had interaction with demand to the left pushed up, swept liquidity above the other highs it's created there, pushed down, caused the four hour break of structure. And it has actually formed quite nicely as well with quite a lot of liquidity below. So potentially what we can see after price has now wicked this is we could see a bullish retracement, hopefully into a zone into here, could just be something higher up in this week, which price didn't mitigate when it came back to test it back on the 2nd of September. But ideally we'd wanna be seeing price come back up to this zone here. And then we'd be looking for a specific set of things to occur to allow us to be taking those shorts to here. Now, all the members in the community are receiving flow charts, which I will just show you an example of one now. So this flow chart here is a, an example of what they'll be seeing. Obviously I've cropped out what you should actually be doing at each point, but this is how systematic everything is in the course, okay? So if four hour is bearish, we need to identify if we're in premium of the leg or if we are in discount. Say for example, we are in premium, we then need to identify our 15 minute structure. Once we've identified our 15 minute structure, we identify whether we're in premium or discount of that leg. Then we also identify our order flow and based on the combination of these different things, which is every possible combination there can be, you will have a specific set of rules as to where you can enter, if you should be holding a runner and if so, how much and where you should be holding that runner to, okay? So it is gonna be extremely systematic like this. There's zero discretion again, like I've been saying, but this is just a quick sort of uh, intro as to what you can be expecting once you join the course. So yeah, ideally that's what we'd be looking for on GU. The other, the other option would be if price just pushes down, creates a new four hour boss, depending on where it stops, it might actually sweep this low, which is the weekly demand. Once that would be broken or swept, we should see quite a significant pullback, which if we, for example, were to stop there and break, this here would probably be our new four hour range. <clears throat> and then we could potentially be taking trades out of this newly formed supply zone. So we'll have to see next week as to exactly what occurs, but yeah, they're my two sort of, um, out, sorry, two sort of setups that I'm potentially looking for on GU. I personally won't be trading this pair, but if you are following this, this is the two things I'd be looking for. Either a pullback into this zone before we break this low, and then taking continuation shorts from here into this targeted low, or we would see the break or sweep of the 
weekly demand, a pullback into premium of the newly created range before taking continuation shorts again. So let's see if this is accurate uh, in next week's outlook when we have a look back. But yeah, let's now jump into US 30. So lastly, let's have a look at US 30. Again, starting off on the weekly, we can see here where price is tapped. It was this POI here, which was fully engulfed, had interaction and has led to a break of structure. We actually wicked below it and that's what's given us the pullback up, but we didn't actually close below. This here at the time would have been a supply zone, a valid supply zone, as it put in a low lower than this low here. However, we've already broken above that and now we've tapped into a higher supply zone to the left. So this was the this is the current controlling supply zone. And again, obviously on the weekly, that's all we need to do. We remain systematic and follow the rules and we jump down to the daily time frame. So the daily boss that I'd be looking at at this pair would be here. leaving our daily high as this high here. And we haven't yet had a significant enough pullback, just as we saw on GU and on AU to confirm a daily low. We can look to the left and see some zones that we're currently interacting from. Again, on the daily, we don't actually mark out any POI, so I will be removing these right now, but I'm just showing you what we could potentially be seeing a pullback from. We've also got this guy here, which has swept a lot of liquidity below these lows here. This has had interaction with this supply. Also with the supply in the wick here. Pushed down, swept the liquidity, and then led to a bullish break of structure, which has pushed us into this newly higher supply zone on the weekly. This here would have been that supply zone on the weekly, which we broke through. So at the time, this would have been a lot of bullish momentum entering to break a whole weekly supply zone. But then we just tapped into another higher supply zone and we've seen quite an aggressive uh, bearish pullback there. So we can remove these. I just wanted to show you some POIs we could potentially be tapping into, but on the daily, we don't need to mark out any POIs. We start doing that on the four hour. So again, we can't yet mark out our daily low and we can jump down to the four hour. In terms of our four hour structure, after we make these lines neat, because I've got full blown OD, uh, sorry, um, full blown OCD, the four hour structure that I'd be marking at this time, given this pair's characteristics, doesn't have as much volatility recently as some of the forex pairs. Uh, we would be marking this one here as our four hour boss, leaving this as our four hour high. And we have seen quite a significant bullish pullback here. So this is our four hour low, which we can see we've actually just swept just as we saw, sorry, wrong drawing tool. This is our four hour low, oh, wrong again. <laughs> four hour low, there we go, third time lucky. Um, so currently our four hour range is from here to here. And what we can see is we've actually already fulfilled the pullback into a very nice zone in premium. If we look at this low here, has that interacted with anything to the left? Yep, so we've got this candle, which has swept a lot of liquidity. And we can get rid of this zone. You can see here, this is a liquidity sweep. We can pull this across, mark this as liquidity. And then if we look at this high, okay. To identify if this is actually a significant zone, it's had to have led to a break of structure here, which it has, but I also wanna see what it's interacted with here. So we've got these sort of, they're not greatly formed POIs to be honest with you. Okay, but it depends on where they're interacting with as well. So we've got these buy to sell wicks at the time, which were demand. And get rid of this horizontal line, mark this out as demand. This again has interacted with these. So we can always see there's a reason why price moves the way it does, okay? We need to just be able to identify why. Um, and to do so, you need to go through my course. Um, so these buy sell weeks here, they flipped this supply. They led to a break of structure up here. Price came back, interacted with them, left these very small POIs. If we pull this to the left, this was a supply zone. Price interacted with this, pushed down. This candle had already swept the liquidity. Then we can see these next candles are just a sort of supply, uh, sorry, a demand chain. So this mitigated this, then this actually swept again and mitigated that one. We have another liquidity sweep here. And then we can actually highlight this POI. From 
here to here. Mark them both out as demand. And let's pull them across to the right. So this one, we can see once we swept below, we had a nice pullback there. But if we look just at the larger sort of range, oh, we haven't actually tapped into this range. So what it looks like we've stopped here for is this POI here. Okay, which was the last sort of sell before the big buy, which broke structure, which again does make it valid. Just hasn't had interaction with something to the left as significant as the other two have. Looks like it's just sort of interacted with this whole candle. So mark that as supply. Let's get rid of these for the moment. This here on the lower time frames would have set a lower low below this low here. On the four hour, it looks like it's just a sweep. Maybe on the 15 minute here, we did set a lower low. So this would have been a valid supply zone on the 15 minute. But again, we don't try to uh, justify our trade ideas by switching time frames. That's why this wasn't a POI immediately picked as being super important. These other two POIs had had a more significant interaction with the, uh, with zones to the left and have had larger sort of uh, liquidity sweeps as well. This zone has also actually had a liquidity sweep. However, yeah, it looks like there were more orders resting here than in these two here. That's why we had this big influx as well. Therefore, when prices come back into this zone, it's pushed above. We've actually had a liquidity sweep above here as well. Okay, and then we've caused that four hour break of structure. Now this here, what did this interact with? This interacted with this wick. Okay, that makes more sense. I think I was just looking at the wrong zone just then guys, so apologies. Once we've interacted with this week here, we have actually seen that pullback again, which on the lower time frames, this also would have been a liquidity sweep. Um, yep, and then we've prices come into there. It swept the whole POI, which if you remember, you'll know why that's extremely important. You can see this here is a sweep. And again, inside here, let me just mark this up. Inside this week, and maybe a little bit lower, there probably would have been a great entry to be targeting this low. Why this we should be targeting this low is that we would have seen demand zones on the way start to fail. Therefore, this would have been a targeted low as it failed to set a higher high. And we can see that we're quite bearish. Like if we look at this candle here, um, we're bearish on the daily, we're bearish on the four hour. And we can start to see that we should be targeting this, which would have been that CPB that I marked out before on the daily, as well as this guy down here. And I actually believe we should be actually targeting this low as well. Might not happen next week. I don't think it will. Maybe in two to three weeks time. But it looks like this low will be failing as we've already started to see quite significant levels here begin to fail. We could actually hold here, potentially here. This is probably a better zone. Had an extreme amount of liquidity swept here. So ideally, I believe this four hour pullback is complete. If we do close below here, we'll have a new four hour range. We could potentially see a pullback into this bullish candle here, which is a very nicely formed candle as well, to then potentially be targeting this low. At this point, I wouldn't be, if I'm entering trades along this cell here, I wouldn't be holding them all the way to the targeted low that I've just marked. I'd be holding them just to the top of this catalyst for a pullback. And at this point, we'd need to see if prices intentions are to switch and turn bullish to take out all of this, which would have been generated liquidity to potentially target something further up into here. Or if we are just going to have a bit of a pullback, a break, and then ideally we'd want to be trading in a zone up here, which would have swept the liquidity above these highs to be targeting this low. So I hope that's all made sense. And I hope that you enjoyed that little bit of a sneak peek I gave you of the flowcharts. If you do have any questions about the course, or if you're ready to get started, the link below will actually take you straight to the website now for you to join. And you will instantly have access to the content as well as the link to join the discord and a one-on-one -on -one session booking with myself. So you will actually have three one-on-one -on -one sessions with me throughout the course is completion. One to get everything started, one when you've completed all the course content, and then you will also be having a back testing session with me where I'll get you to take screenshots of the four hour, 15 minute and the one minute, and we'll go through at least 50 trades just to make sure that you have actually understood every part of the strategy and to allow you to ask any last questions. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you have a great week and I will chat to you guys next weekend.